Hello, welcome to MCA Services and our second video all about mercury porosimetry. In the first video we presented some of the basics of the technique. In this video and the next one we're going to be following a sample all the way through selecting the sample itself, selecting the penetrometer to use for analysis and also how we actually analyse the sample on our autopore. We're going to be analysing a sample of chalk and this is our sample. It's quite a nice sample to analyse, it's easy to handle, it's easy to load into the penetrometer and it's easy to analyse on the autopore. We've already degassed it, so really to make sure that it's free of all moisture. We know that this piece is around about the right weight for analysis. So the next thing we have to do is select the penetrometer. In the background here we can see a range of penetrometers there's actually a bigger range than this, but we've, we've put a few of them out to, to show how they differ. This is a penetrometer that we will actually be using for this analysis. Now in the first video we went through the design of the penetrometer, but just to quickly recap, at this end of it we have the sample bulb. Now the whole thing's made out of glass, and the sample will sit in this bulb, and then this end of it will be sealed up. Attached to that is the stem. The silver on it is the metallic coating and this stem essentially acts as a reservoir for mercury. So at the start of analysis the entire stem and the bulb is full of mercury. Pressure is then introduced from this end to force mercury into the pores within the sample. Now because this is a finite stock of mercury held within the stem we have to make sure that the volume of pores within the sample does not exceed the volume of mercury held within the stem. Otherwise we'll run out of mercury before we reach the end of the analysis. To help with this, there's a whole range of penetrometers. Now we can see the first three here to accommodate different sized samples have different sized bulbs on the end. The one at the bottom is nominally three cubic centimetres. The next one is nominally five cubic centimetres and this big one is fifteen cubic centimetres. We then have a choice to make over which stem volume to use. Now this is quite a narrow stem. This is the narrowest you can get and that's 0.4 millilitres. There's one in between at 1.1 millilitres and finally the biggest which is this here, is 1.8 mill millilitres. Each of these different bulb volumes has the same association of stem as well, so three stems per bulb volume. We also have two different types of penetrometer. These are solid type penetrometers, so they take a solid, as the name suggests, a solid piece of sample. However, if we're analysing powders, we don't want the powder to have access to the stem. So this, for example, is a powder type penetrometer. And you can see that inside that, the stem extends right up to the top of the bulb through a cone. That stops any powder samples being drawn down the bore of the stem. So three different sample bulbs, three different stem volumes, and all of those combinations repeated again for powder and solid type penetrometers. We already know that this particular penetrometer is the ideal one to use for this sample of chalk. It has a 5cc bulb and a 1.8 milliliter stem. To load the penetrometer up, we take our sample, we've already weighed this, and we know that it weighs 3.3452 grams, and we just put it into the stem like that, into the bulb like that. We then seal the open end around the flange with a small bead of high, high vacuum grease. That goes all the way around the flange. We then have a metal cap, so we have an electrical contact now at both ends. Put that on the grease, 
and then we seal it all up with one of these collars, a plastic collar. So now we have an assembled penetrometer with our sample inside it. We just quickly tighten this up. And that sample is then ready for analysis. Because with this analysis we're going to be also measuring bulk density, skeletal density and volume porosity. So the volume of the sample that is comprised of pores as a proportion, a percentage of the overall bulk volume of the sample, we now need to weigh that entire assembly. But essentially that is now ready for analysis on the autopore. And we're going to take that through in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. We hope that this has, has given some information on the technique. And if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to get into contact with us.